Hey and uh, welcome back to another tutorial on Sol. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the second very, very important data structure that you need when writing a Sol patches, and that is a graph. We had our processes, and now we're going to introduce you to graphs. Uh, now here we have a bare bones processor that you basically get when you make a new Sol patch uh, using the button right here. And it's very, very similar to the one that we built manually in the previous video. It just uses a stream instead of an event endpoint for a volume control. That's the most it's the most significant difference. And that is actually fine because the host will usually be able to handle it handle it efficiently. Um, so that that shouldn't be any any performance issue then. But it currently has one problem, and that is that it's not very modular. If we wanted to have an additional operation, let's say something like a filter operation then it'd be quite silly to write them both into the run function of one processor. What we want instead is we want modularity in our patch and we want to be able to make an instance of a processor that we've written before. And that is what graphs are for. These are, as I explained in a previous video, the spot where you can declare and connect your processes. We actually don't do much number crunching here. And this section in our patch is merely there for declaring and connecting processes and to keep things organized and tidy. And we can, uh, we can make a graph by typing the keyword graph, that's obvious. And we're going to give it a name and I'm just going to call it tutorial, tutorial graph. And uh, of course you should be much more diligent uh, when it comes to your naming conventions. And this is then followed of, of course by scope again. Now, um, in bigger patches, it's very, very likely that you might have multiple graphs to keep things tidy. So we need some way to tell the host that this is a top-level graph. And we can do this by adding this annotation main that is currently on our processor right here. We can move that and just put it to our tutorial graph. And this is basically saying uh, this is the top-level structure there might be processes nested inside here. There might be other graphs nested inside here. But this is our top level structure. And this is going to, going to be what's, what's processed when the, the soul patch is compiled in our host. And once we have that set up, we need the same properties as we did in our processor. That's very, very easy. We need inputs and we need outputs. And this is done with the exact same syntax that you're, that you're already used to. So we can just move our we can copy our audio in and audio out. And uh, we can do it right here. We can just paste it right here. And um, the input and the output declarations actually have to come first before anything else when, when you're writing your graph. Otherwise, you will get a compiler error telling you to just do that. And then what we need otherwise is we need the annotation of our slider in the graph. So we don't have any slider here and we wouldn't be able to connect it to this, to this stream, input stream right here. So what we can do instead is we can just copy it right here, have the annotation in our graph, and because we have the annotation in our graph, we can just remove it. We can just remove it from our processor. And um, it makes sense to write these annotation at one appropriate place. Let's say you have multiple parameters in a, in a much bigger in a much bigger soul patch, like a like a reverb, for example, um, it's actually it makes sense to write these annotations at one place and decide on that early in development, so just so that you know where to look for them when you have to look for them. The other thing that we need is we need an instance of our processor. Remember here, this is the structure that we wrote. This is the processor that we wrote, and we can make an instance of it right here. We can use the let keyword to deduce the type from the initializer. So we can we could say gain, give it a name, I'm going to call it g equals gain. What we could also say is we can say let g equals gain. And this is basically deducing the type from the initializer right here. Note that if we use let, we cannot reassign our variable. If you wanted to do so and still have the type deduction, you can use the var keyword. You could do it like this. Wouldn't make any difference other than now you can reassign g. But I would say that it's it's not appropriate to, to reassign g. Why, why would we do that? 
Um, so I think it's perfectly fine and definitely appropriate to use let the let keyword in my operation and say that this can g cannot be reassigned again. The next big thing that we need is that we need a section where we can define the connections within our graph. So we need a connection scope. And this again is done by saying connection followed by a scope. And in this connection scope, we can set up our connections using an arrow operator. Now, this is very, very important. Um, this has nothing to do with the arrow operator that you might know from C++. This is just saying whatever stream comes from, comes from the left-hand side connected to the endpoint on the right-hand side. Here we have our top-level connections audio in, top-level input audio in. That is part of our, of our top-level graph. And we can connect it to the input of our, our gain processor that we declared right here. We can just say arrow operator. And if we want to access the audio in of our, of our gain, we can just say g dot, like we, like we would do it with a member variable, basically. We can say audio in. What we can then also say is we can say g audio out. Let's go to our audio out. That should make sense to you. And lastly, what we need is we need to connect our top level slider that we have right here. We need to connect it to the input stream of our uh, of the instance of our gain processor. So we can say g gain db. And this is basically all we have to do. We have to say in our connection, whatever is on the left-hand side, whatever point is on the left-hand side, connected to the endpoint of our right-hand side. And this can also be done with events, actually. You only need the endpoints on both sides of the operator to be either streams or events, respectively. So you can only connect streams to streams and events to events. And I think this is, this is relatively uh, intuitive. And if we then compile our patch again, this should work just fine. We can press on play, and it's still working. And if we can, we can view our audio graph right here, that we have our top level structure here, and then we have an instance of our gain processor right here. And this works just fine. Now, you might not hear any difference in the sound, but uh, I hope that it gives you an idea of how powerful graphs are. From here, you can figure out how to split and merge signals and maybe even make feedback loops. But as always, we're only scratching the surface here. So for more info on that, I recommend looking at the documentation. And more importantly, you get started on your own mess, uh, mess with your own um, soul patches and ideas that you want to come up with. So by now, you should know how to make your own processes, put them into graphs, handle events, streams, and all that good stuff. And whenever you're making a graph, just think about which lever you're operating on. Is it a top-level graph? Is it a lower-level graph? And if you're strict and consistent about your naming, then you should be able to restructure your patch in no time if you need to. In the next video, I'll introduce you to some other data structures that you will need um, when, when doing more DSP-related operations. And for that, I will actually show you how to implement a very, very simple delay line. Sol has some nifty types and syntax to do that. So that's what we'll do in the next video. But I hope you found this useful. You can get started with processes and graphs to prototype your own ideas for plugins or other nifty algorithms. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you in the next video. Till then, uh, take care and stay safe.